Whoa, this is heavy, Doc. It's the year 2015, and anchor people are still dependent on teleprompters. Question mark? Welcome to this Halloween edition of the Weekly Recap. I'm Matt Wacker. Should Missouri legalize marijuana? Voters may get to answer that question if just one of several statewide petitions can manage to appear on the 2016 ballot. Two organizations are attempting to make that happen, but each group has a different approach to the issue. The Missouri Cannabis Restoration and Protection Act is looking for total legalization, while New Approach Missouri is only seeking legalization with a prescription from a doctor. Rolla Police Chief Sean Fagan said he is against legalizing marijuana for medical purposes as he feels it will be abused by people who may not really need a prescription. Phelps County Sheriff Rick Lazenby said he is not opposed to legalizing medical marijuana if it would help people with serious physical conditions and it can be regulated. Missouri s and Solar House Design Team earned fifth place at the 2015 U.S. Department of Energy's Solar Decathlon, its highest ever finish at the competition. The Nest Home was one of 14 entries from around the world. This was the sixth time Missouri S&T had put forth an entry more than any other university. The home will now be disassembled and transported back to Rolla, where it will become part of a second neighborhood of solar homes on the Missouri S&T campus. The house was judged by a panel of experts in 10 different categories. Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken, New Jersey won top honors overall. The Blue Hill Company recently competed and won a national USDA grant totaling $121,000. Blue Hill produces specialty jams and fillings from blueberries grown on its 80-acre site near Rolla. The company celebrated the USDA's value-added producer grant at a recent ceremony that included a ribbon-cutting and fall festival. Fidelity's Lee Mintink was in attendance. Matt, we're here at Blue Hill Company, which is an 80-acre farm just outside of Rolla. I'm talking with owners Brenda and Jimmy Story about their farm out here. They just received a USDA national grant for $121,000. It's a value added grant uh, that is actually they competed nationally for, but only 11 were awarded in the state of Missouri. So, Jimmy, how did you go about getting that grant? Well, we started reviewing the grant and the value added, how it assists the producers from a standpoint of taking their locally grown products and making a product from it that adds value. You see they're taking what we're doing, the blueberries, and putting them into a jam product or as well if you're taking something else, whether it be um, watermelons or if it's even being cantaloupes or anything of that, but you're adding value to it. Okay. So for Matt, we applied to the grant in the in the structure of adding value to what we're doing here on the farm. Okay. Well, Brenda, tell me a little bit more about your product and how you go about getting it out to the public. Well, my product started basically with a, a I have a blueberry pepper jam, and it's just got a little heat, so it's not your mama's jam. <laughs> and friends and family were always, "Hey, can I get an extra jar from you? Because I want to serve it at a party." And that's kind of what triggered the the product so it's, it's just got a little bit of heat um, and it's made as a jam so I try to keep as much fruit and that sets us apart from what you can find in the stores yes so we're, we're more of the jam with a lot of fruit and a little bit of heat than uh -huh. most things you can find in the store sounds sounds interesting and you are everything is locally grown on site yes ma'am that you we, use we uh, do um, blueberries on farm um, we have a couple of other farms throughout Missouri that provide us the blueberries or, or we go pick them. We also get our peaches and our apples from local uh, farms just down the road. So our, our goal is to make sure everything that we put in our products are Missouri grown locally if not within the state. So okay. it really helps the other producers add value to their products or you know. Absolutely you're adding to the economy of yes, the state. So what is in the future for Blue Hill Company? Well we're currently in our process. We we call this an artesian batch. It's all by mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. um, we t again we we cook it, we pour it, we jar it all by hand. Yes. That way it is well. I, I want to call it. It's well maintained. Maybe, the quality of it. Maybe love. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is good. Our goal is that we're looking at for the future here is we're getting our products now into some of the supermarkets, retail chains. We have local folks coming in and buying it. And as well, we're starting the uh, e-commerce side. People are ordering it as well online from our mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. But we also are looking at in the future here going international. We've had questions about mm -hmm. taking our product and being able to get it into Europe and as well as some of the Asian countries as well. We are looking at as well need be to expand our operation to put in more of the ovens and as more of the mixing type equipment that we've mm -hmm. got. So some of that uh, USDA grant money will obviously help with those endeavors. They will indeed. Yes. They will well, help. we wish you the best of luck. Thank it's just beautiful that. out here. Again, Matt, um, I'm with Jimmy and Brenda Story out here at Blue Hill Company. Back to you. Nationally, the United States Department of Agriculture awards $30 million each year to producers who help bring products from farm to table. Eleven value-added producer grants were awarded in Missouri in 2015. There are 641 bridges across Missouri on MoDOT's critical condition list, up from 591 in 2014. Replacing these critical bridges would cost in excess of $820 million, which is not feasible with current funding. Bridges are rated on a nine-point scale, with nine being a new bridge and two being a closed bridge. Missouri's critical condition bridges carry either ratings of three or four. Twenty-seven of those bridges are within the Merrimack region, and three of those are in Phelps County. MoDOT area engineer Preston Kramer plans to highlight the Route B bridge across the Gasconade in a presentation to the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission at its November meeting. We'll let you know what happens. It only took a Phelps County jury about an hour to find 37-year-old Jason Bruce guilty of raping a Rolla woman in June of last year, roughly one year after he was released from a Florida prison for doing the exact same thing. After hearing the victim's testimony in trial, the jury also returned guilty verdicts on four other felonies that resulted from the 2014 sexual assault. Sentencing has been scheduled for December 10th. An update to a story we brought you last week featuring Dixon City Marshal Mike Plummer. Plummer was served a charge of impeachment on October 20th by the town's mayor and an order of suspension by the Dixon Board of Aldermen. All of this after being charged with 15 counts by the Pulaski County Prosecuting Attorney, most of which stem from a DWI arrest on New Year's Day of this year. The Board of Aldermen will hold an impeachment hearing and take a vote on whether or not they believe Plummer is guilty. Until that time, Plummer is suspended with pay. A 34-year-old Lebanon woman reportedly threw eggs at her own car after an argument with her boyfriend. According to police reports, an officer responded to the 20,000 block of Ostrich Lane just after midnight on October 17th. Upon arrival, a 40-year-old male told the officer he had gotten into an argument with his girlfriend. She went out and threw eggs on a car that was in both of their names. The woman had also thrown all of her boyfriend's property out in the yard. Both subjects stated there had been no physical violence between the two. District playoff football continues on October 30th. Following their 42-16 win over Rolla, Lebanon will head to Washington to face the Blue Jays. Salem also advanced and will now hit the road to take on the Ava Bears. West Plains will host their second straight playoff game, this time against the Bolivar Liberators. You can find that game on Local 6 and 6HD beginning November 3rd. I'm out of time, folks. Got to jump in the DeLorean and head to the year 2045. Perhaps that year won't be as underwhelming as this one's been. I'm Matt Wacker, and I'll see you in the future.